Hello, hello. We're back again. Um, this is Tim still. We're going to do part two of the breakout code session here. Um, I hope everyone's doing all right. I hope everyone enjoyed the first video. I didn't bore everybody too much. Um, I wanted to cover a couple things real quick before we get started. Uh, first, it occurred to me after I posted the video that <laughs> everybody seems to be doing breakout tutorials. Uh, so I felt kind of bad because I know there's some people that are in the Hacks Flexible community that have done some uh, tutorials, especially like a breakout one. So, so don't, um, don't use mine as the end-all be-all or whatever, you know, this is my version. I haven't looked at other people's tutorials for this. I'm just kind of going at it um, my own way. Um, you know, we're playing jazz here. We're, we're, we're coding freestyle. We're figuring out what things are on the way, playing around with stuff. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I enjoy out of coding is, is, is the, um, you know, the freedom to just kind of mess around. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna break anything, uh, serious. And if you do get an error, you just fix it. You know, you learn from it you move on. Uh, that's why I'm including all the stuff in here where I try things and they don't work and I try something else and and we stumble on the right answer. So, so um, I didn't come into this as a plan. I didn't write this already. I don't have a source code I'm, I'm basing this off of. I'm, I'm totally going freestyle here. Um, if you want a more, you know, thought out approach, there's a, like I said, there's other tutorials out there that you should uh, definitely go through as well even if for the same type of game, because you're going to learn different styles. I might have one style of doing things and somebody else is a different way. And maybe one isn't necessarily better, but um, you can definitely find tricks and, and, and little, little things, um, you know, that you can utilize in, in, in your coding. Uh, so, 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 you know, I just want to say that, that, you know, let's say you follow my tutorial here follow along, you know, we code along and you make a breakout game, you know, go check out all the tutorials too, even if they're for the same thing. Um, yeah, and I think that was about it. That's about all I wanted to, to, to talk about uh, first. So let's just jump right in. Let's just take a look at what we had uh, yesterday. Uh, we'll just run this and see where we, where we left off. There we go. All right, we got our little guy. We got to we got to give it focus. That's always annoying. Uh, we got a ball that bounces, and we got a pedal that can hit it. Uh, that's great. Okay. <clears throat> so, what is missing from the um, breakout game experience? Obviously the bricks. We'll need to get some bricks in there, hopefully today. We'll need to get a score. So we'll get a scoreboard in there. Uh, our scoring system. Not necessarily, we don't necessarily have to do a high score system right now. We can add it in later on. Uh, we have to have some kind of live system where, you know, if you lose your ball, you, you lose a life. And then the game resets. Um, maybe an option so that it doesn't launch the ball till you're ready. So that, uh, you know... You have a minute to, to get ready. Maybe a little title screen that'll have, you know, press press a key to start, and then it'll start the game. Um, uh, things like that. So I think that's what we want to focus on today. Hopefully we get all those things done. And if all those things are done, I think we will be done with this version of this game. Um, again, I didn't want to be, I wanted to keep it real simple. I mean, if you look at the original Breakout arcade game, it was terribly stupid too simple. Uh, it was basically two levels that were identical. Once you beat the second level, it was, it just stopped. You know, the game just, you just kept bouncing the ball around and you couldn't do anything. And there's a, there's a maximum score that anyone, that no one could ever get, you know, beyond that score. So very simple, very silly. Um, we're going to have something that's almost as silly and almost simple, although we probably won't let it go on more levels, you know, um, Let's just start it. So, yeah. So, if you remember from last time, we had the ball. Uh, it launches. 
as soon as the game starts. So as soon as we come into the state, we spawn everything, and then we launch the ball immediately. So I think what we want to do is... Um, wait until the player clicks or hits a key uh, before we launch the ball. Um, yeah. So in order to do that, what we're going to do here is Hmm. Hmm. We'll add a variable here. Call it ball ready. Come here, we're going to say ball ready. We'll leave the mouse out of it for now. We might add in mouse support. Or maybe the last thing we'll do. Basically, right now we're just gonna say the game starts. We spawn. We we we, we do everything in the create where we create the level. Uh, we we spawn the ball, and then we wait for the player to hit any key, in which and then we'll launch the ball, and then the game will actually start with collisions and everything. We could probably just add the collision. Like we probably don't need this else here. Um, it's, it's probably fine, though. So let's just see if that works. It should work just fine. Although there's always, you know, unexpected surprises that we want to uh, try to notice early. So the ball is actually there. I thought this one a little bit higher. And also the player can move around before they launch the ball, which is fine. Although why am I not launching? Huh. Ah. Ah. Oh, I should probably do this. Once I launch the ball, now why did that not do anything? I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the ball up a little bit too from where it spawns, just to give it a little room. Um, speed sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. And why, why didn't any key work? I should have thought that was the way to do that. We can have it set to space bar or something else too. We don't have to have it. We don't have to have it be any key. Huh, I thought that was, was a, right. Again, we're just, we're just jazzing things out here. Um, yeah, strange. Let's just try the space bar and see. I don't know if there's something weird about the any key thing. Um, we'll do space, we'll do W, we'll do I, and we'll do up. So basically the player can do A and D, do left and right, W to launch. Or if they're, if they're using this other, other side of the keyboard, we'll do J, the J and L, and I to launch. Or the arrow keys, left and right to move and up to launch, or they hit space bar. That should all work. Oh, wait a minute. I see exactly what the problem is. Oh, I see what the problem is. Yep. Actually, let's do this. Let's do this, and then we'll say... We don't need to be in here. 
we'll put that in the ball itself so we know we can control a little easier. Oops. I don't know why I was misspelled it like that. We spawn the ball, ready, it's false. When we launch the ball, ready, equals true. That should work. And then in that case, we might we might as well put any any back in there just to see if that works again. All right, there's the ball. Focus. It launches as soon as I hit anything, which I guess is fine. Yeah, this lag the lag is terrible when uh, <laughs> I'm also recording. I don't know how to resolve that. Um, yeah, that's, that's really funky. Oh. Oh, well, 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 okay, so. Do I want the player to be able to move the, the paddle before the ball launches? I mean, yeah. We'll go back to that. That's fine. So they got to press up. Or space, you know, to launch the ball. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so the other thing I want to look at was when the paddle hits the ball, we want the ball to, we want to change the angle of the ball a little bit based on where it hit the paddle. So... Let's do this. Take all A4 panel. And we're just going to say that. So this is similar to what we were trying to do before where we were going to have it when we were trying to get bouncing to work without the elasticity set. The problem here is I want to adjust the angle based on where on the panel it hits. So the further from the center, the more it should redirect that angle a little bit. Um, Let's do this. Let's just have it call B dot it handle and we're going to send it over the handle's midpoint. Uh, uh, like that. Okay, and we're going to come over here and we're going to say function hit panel, is what we called it. And we're going to say alright. Alright. <clears throat> so now We want to know again the ball polar coordinates. Mm -hmm. Gonna give us, it's going to give it its, its speed and its angle. Mm -hmm. 
and I believe this is after a hit. So let me just let's just put a, let's put a break here and see. Um, let's say velocity. And then we'll do bipolar. So let's see what it says. Because I want to know if this is after we've already bounced or if it's before it bounced. If it's before, you know, um, right, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Based on if it's after or before the bounce takes place, we'll have to figure out which way we adjust things. Okay, so that's right, right, probably right before it hit. So the velocity is is. We'll show. There we go. Is why is it being? Thirty-four, negative ninety-seven. So it's going back up at this point. So we we've hit, we've already bounced. Okay. So we don't need to adjust any of that stuff. We just need to know right now. Um, the speed is one hundred three, the angle is negative seventy. Negative seventy. That's up and to the right, I'm assuming. And so we want to say, okay, so this is perfect. This is after the bounce has happened. We're going to increase or decrease that angle based on where in relation to the middle of the pedal we hit. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of those parentheses there, but that's fine. So basically we're going to say Take the position of the paddle, center of the paddle, subtract from it where the ball is at. So the ball is to the right of the middle of the paddle. I need to reverse that. That was there, and this is here. Uh, let's reverse this. And we're going to divide it by okay. So if we're in the very edge, if we're all the way to the right, let's say okay. So, yeah, this is, this is going to work, I think. <laughs> but now what we're going to do is say... Velocity dot set b four dot x zero dot rotate. Um, and the angle is going to be bipolar 
dot y plus ten times diff. Right? Oh, I don't know if a B's here. It doesn't make sense. Okay. I think my math is right here, or close to right. Basically, I want to I want to increase or decrease the the angle of the ball after it bounces off the paddle by between zero and uh, negative between negative ten and ten percent, or or just ten. Uh, sorry, negative ten and ten degrees based on where on the panel it hit. So if it hits in the very dead center, it's not going to change it at all, the angle at all. If it hits on the very far left, it'll reduce it by 10 degrees, the angle. If it hits on the far right, it'll increase it by 10 degrees. So, um, just checking out my math here real quick. Um, yeah. Am I doing this wrong? Let me think about this again for a second here. <laughs> um it's not working right let me think let me think this out think this out um mm hmm Mm hmm Yeah, actually that's, that's that's right. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um Can't wrap my, my mind around this and these numbers. I think we're good. So the way this should work is increase or decrease by ten percent. Uh, a percentage of 10% based on where it hits. Never focus. Let me focus. Okay, come on. Ooh. Yeah. Let's do like 45 degrees. So if you hit on the very edge, it's going to go, it's going to, it's going to make it go more left by up to 45 degrees. If you hit on the very right, it's going to go more right. 45 degrees. Oh, that's probably trace. Um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to get a feel for if it's actually doing what I think it's supposed to be doing. I think we're fine, but let's make sure. Let's go over here. See the console. Watch the ball. Make sure we catch the ball. Uh... 
Um, yeah. I mean, it's adjusting it. Maybe it's not adjusting enough, really. Hmm. We go crazy, just go 90 degrees. I mean, so I'm putting this in here because I want to have the player have some agency over the ball. Otherwise, this is almost completely random. They just have to make sure they keep hitting the ball and they win. You know, with this, they can kind of direct a little bit where they want to go. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's working. What I think, I mean, I think it needs to be more than like, I, I mean, I don't even know, like 180, maybe. Was it some kind of percentage is, is the issue? I mean, we can dial it in more later on, but that, that works. That does what I want to do. There we go. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I was looking for. That kind of, that amount of change. I can't catch the ball. <laughs> Maybe the paddle needs to be faster again. I don't know. All right. So, where are we at? Walls, ball, paddle, collisions, the ball spawns, and we can launch it when we want it. So, let's do this. Hmm. You know, we'll do it in the play state. I was gonna do it. On, I'll do it over there. But I think we need. I think we really need to do it in the play state so we can track like the lives and everything. Uh. We'll, we'll just right now just track them up here, but we'll say, oops, we'll say public our lies into cheer equals three. Lives minus minus if lives greater than zero. Otherwise, we'll do it'll just game over at that point, you know. So that way we can keep replaying if we lose the ball. don't like the way the paddle moves. I don't know how to fix it um, yet, but um, that worked. Is it something to do with this being right? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, now let's do blocks. So... Original breakout has, I believe, six rows of blocks, two of each color, and each color represents a different point value. Also, the original breakout, the ball does increase speed, but it's based on other factors than just a slight percentage increase every time it hits. It was like the fourth hit increases it by 10% or something. And when you hit your first red block, it increases it, stuff like that. Um, I would like to do something a little different than that, which is fine. So let's go over here and start this with the blocks. Block. We're going to say package class block extends. Looks right. Okay, there's something going on. With um, when I'm trying to work on this stuff and uh, I'm recording, um, it feels like everything's just a little bit sluggish. Uh, and this I'm making all these typos and things. It's, I mean, 
probably used up too much of this this computer's resources, which is fine. It's good enough to get stuff done. It's fine. Uh, okay, so. Let's stick with six rows. But we can get a little fancier with it. So what I want to do here is block. Oh, I don't need that. Function new. And we're just, we're just going to say row column, right? So if we know the game starts at, so, so if we have, if we have the wall is too wide, right? Then if we have The width of the game being 160, 160 minus the gunner for, let's say we have eight, no, twenty-six, one twenty-six. Okay, if we have our blocks be 12 wide, pixels wide, we get 13 of them on a screen. Sounds fine to me. Uh, we also want to have, I think I think I want to have them be 12 wide by six tall. Um, and again, we can tweak that. We might tweak it or whatever. Um, and if we, but when I leave, I want to leave a, a top of the space empty, maybe by two blocks high, or maybe two blocks high should help, should be fine. So if we say row, uh, we want to be row plus two times here we're going to say just just we have it available with static in line of our block height there's going to be six uh and width which should be the first one this one all right times time block This actually should be reversed. No. This should be reversed, yes. And this should be two blocks. Right. I should put it in the right spot, and I'm going to say make graphic. Now, we can color it based on the row number. Yes, we can say. We could have an array of colors, or we could just say something like, um, um, let's call 
somewhere. That. So we're going to have six rows, right? So sixteen, okay. Saturation one lightness. Is it, is it zero I went there or one? I don't remember. Let's look up real quick. To SSB instead, just because I think I understand a little better. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's a little easier to work with. All right. Okay, so we add a new block. It should, um, if we pass it what row and what column it is supposed to be in, it'll color it properly and it'll. Um, put in the right spot. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have, I'm going to make it clear where the borders of the, of the blocks are. So, um, Was on here where we could draw rectangle. I'm not sure if this works or not. Um, again, I, we'll see. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. Um, line style. Let me look this up. Yeah, we got thickness, color, and the rest of it I can leave alone. Thick. This might give us black with transparent insides and, and completely override this color here. But if that's the case, um, we can fix it, I think. Is that one too many brackets? Yeah, it was. Okay. Now, we want to make over here. Our blocks. We're gonna add them here. I'm telling you it's hard to type for some reason.
Let's go to this. Wait, what did it say? Immovable equals true. Moves equals false. All right, back to here. Now. Row in zero. We said six rows, yep. Column in zero. Thirteen columns. Blocks on add new block. So we're just looping through uh, six times and then 13 times per six rows and then 13 columns per row and just adding a block with those with those coordinates uh, to our block group, which is just added to the state. And let's just see what happens. Well, this should show up. They won't be tangible. Uh, you know, there's no collision yet, but we'll see if it actually just shows up and, and they're the right color and everything. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! More than I had expected. <laughs> um, yeah. And so you'll you'll it looks like there's a gap between them. This is because I use black as the as that filler color, the mortar color. I could use a different color. What would be a good color to put there? Oh. Uh, We could do something like this. So what I've done is I, 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 I am setting a variable to be the color we want the main block shape to be. And then for the border, I'm just getting a version that is 50% darker than the regular block. And that should let us see where the borders are on the blocks. Uh, and also and not uh, look like a, a gutter. There we go. Hey, that works. Now, if you'll notice... <laughs> they don't do anything. And that's because we haven't put any kind of collision in yet. So we're going to go down here and do that. We're going to say let's see dot collide ball block. Sorry, block. Ball hit block. And we're going to go up here, we're going to say public function ball hit block. Uh, oh, let's keep putting an A in there, I don't understand. So, collision detection triggers. A, the ball object collided with the block object. We already applied the elasticity and, and everything around the ball, the ball. And then we're going to call this function. And all we're going to do, do here is say kill. Uh, and also we're going to say you know what, let's do That way we know what we'll know what the score is worth. Um, we hit it, so we're gonna go up here. We're gonna actually add the score here. 
again, we're just storing it as a variable right now. I'm not showing on the screen yet. We'll do that next. And to give the score, we're just going to say score plus equals 100 times block dot row six minus block dot row. So the block at row six, uh, actually, right? The block at row six will give a hundred points because it's going to be five minus six. No. Seven minus five. Let me see. <laughs> right, because it's zero index. Six minus five, one. So 100 by one. The ones at the highest row, row zero, will be six minus zero times 100, which will be 600 points each. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see if that works. Okay. That, oh. Don't know why the panel feels so bad um, when I run it here. It just feels sluggish and weird. Um. <clears throat> I might just, I mean, it could just be there. It could be, it could be a lot of things going on. I don't know. You know, it could be the frame rate, uh, the CPU usage because I'm recording. Who knows? Um, so that works. So now, what's next? Yeah, I feel like it would be easier if I'm not recording. The panels should actually work a little better. Uh, okay, so was Miss? Yep, yep, this is a small. <laughs> what are we actually missing at this point? We need to put the score on and we need to put the lives on. We need to have a game over state. We need to have something that happens when you clear the screen. If, if I could ever manage to do that. Uh, even with the clunky controls. It should not be that hard to make the controls more responsive. I just, I don't understand. I don't have a good idea of why they're, it's so clunky. Um, maybe I can do acceleration instead of velocity. Um, so it's not so hard, but it feels like it's, it's just, I press the key and then it starts moving, you know, it doesn't feel, and then when I let go of the key, it's like another frame or two before it stops. Um, which isn't usual. Usually there's no delay. Maybe again, maybe it's just because of the HTML5. Let's, if I try hash link, it will, it will work. Maybe that'll be super fast. Um, and this is an HTML5 issue with with the recording. I don't know. This may not work. Hashtag could be giving me trouble lately. Um working it is not i don't know what's going on with hashlink lately that's all it ever does anymore is it it says it builds and then it just doesn't so um i'm just been using html5 lately which is i guess fine other than that issue anyway let's get the score and the lives on the screen we're going to use uh just simple flix text 
we're going to say this is called text score. And we'll say text lives. All right. So we're going to come all the way down here. We want to top everything else. Add text score. Duplex text. We want it to be top left to be fine. Um, yeah. Padding option. Yeah. Yep, that looks fine. Okay. Here is what all right, and something similar for the lives. Uh, Pretty pretty self-explanatory. I'm just creating these objects. Uh, I don't like this. Adding them to the state um, with some text in them, setting them their color, and then I'm just updating their text in the update routine. And this guy, I want to have text lives dot alignment. And the only other thing I want to do with this guy is Let's see if I can find a good looking like a Unicode thing. Just 
just look at some stuff up here for a second. Um, I don't see what I want there. Um, just see if I can find something that will work well enough. works. It might not work. I might mess around with that some more, but hang on. Hmm. <laughs> so I know <clears throat> the ball can go behind the text up here but I'm not too worried about it I could move like everything down put the score and everything above it but it's probably fine I don't care that much about that right now um I did want to not yeah I did want to have it actually be something that showed up here Huh, this should should work. Uh usually it does. So I'm having it for some reason today. <laughs> Back to that uh the code. Um We'll add a little, little thing to it. Um, what's ball look like again? Four by four.
Let's see if it looks good or not. It's probably fine. Why does it say E there? Oh, if it looks down here. Oh. That may work. I just want to mess it up. I used one of the U goes around range, maybe. In that case, like the ball back out. Well, <laughs> a little tiny <laughs> thing. I don't know why these are like you know, alias either. I don't know. Sometimes I don't understand what HTML5 is doing. Um. What does this one look like? Or what about this is a solid square? The ball is a square, you know what I mean? Two five A oh. two. Yeah, I mean if that works, I'll be fine with that. That should be, I mean. Again, we're not marketing this game. We're not trying to make it as user-friendly as possible. We're just trying to make sure that it works. And we should see here that a square, you know, is fine enough, good enough for our purposes. Yeah, that's all right. That's fine. And again... We could spend some time to clean that up in one, two. We could move, like I so said, we could move uh, them somewhere else. We can make them smaller, whatever we felt like we wanted to do. Uh, yeah, that shouldn't happen. We're basically almost done, guys. I just, you know, want to do a few things here. Oops. Uh, there really isn't much else to do with, with for, for this little, little deaky little thing. Um, what could we add just to make it, you know, show off some other things? I mean, right now the game works, right? If you game over you know we'll do something here um as long as the game's working We can do something down here that says
So, uh -uh. static variables and functions and things are very good um, to use for storing data across states, okay? Uh, and, and, and across um, classes and things. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to move uh, some of our variables over here. I'm take these two, I'll put them in globals, and I'm going to add one called a new game. And I'll explain it here in a second why we're doing this. We're going to go down here and let's say we, we can leave this blank. So it immediately gets changed, updated down. I don't, you know. So one thing about coding, you should avoid ever having something twice or more than once. So because this text is immediately updated down here, um, actually what we're going to do is I'm going to make these invisible. Because they get updated as soon as we start needing them, we don't want to need to put anything in the, in the, in the, initializ in the initialization part. Uh, that makes sense. So I'm going to make them invisible until um, the game actually starts okay here do all this stuff just make sure we can access those variables Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so the main thing, the other thing I want to do is I want to make a, like a little title screen that says, you know, to play, hit, start, or whatever. We're going to do that as a substate, I believe. Hmm. And the other thing down here is we're going to say
okay sorry I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think it's hard to think and talk at the same time basically what I'm saying is when a brand new game starts are globals new games gonna be set to true okay and the game's gonna start it's gonna go all the way down here we're gonna fade in the screen and it's gonna say because we're in a new game I want to show a title screen splash screen thing okay if we're not in a new game we're just gonna go to start game so start game is what tells the game we've actually started spawns the ball shows the score on the uh, you know displays the score uh, so the other thing we did is every update we're gonna check to see how many blocks are still alive if none are alive we're gonna kill the ball we're gonna fade it out to black reset the state now because in our show title splash we're gonna we're gonna flag that new game is false we're gonna basically reset this whole state come back up through here again get down here and say oh we're not in a new game so start the game and we're going to continue on from we're basically resetting the game so they can keep playing with their old score and, and, and live count um should make sense in a minute okay well i'll show you how it works so the splash screen i want to make i'm just going to go here and say public function show title splash We're gonna say new game. Um, we can do that. We can do that on the title screen itself. Open up state new title splash. Um, what? New title splash. The callback is going to be. We're gonna call start. We're just gonna have we're gonna have a couple things here. We're gonna have a back sprite. Have it back dot graphic. The one thing to keep in mind about Pixel, or about hacks, I should say, uh, integers can go into flo floats, but floats cannot go into integers. So you have to make sure that if it's a float, you're, you're getting back, you need to turn it into an integer sometimes. It's, it's fine, it's annoying, but it's fine.
just making some things here we can do um Sorry, uh, I feel like I'm not talking enough here. <laughs> My bad. I'm not used to doing, uh, being on, on performing, uh, performance like this. Um, They close. Um, do need the new shoot. Yeah, I don't know why I moved that. I'm making. Uh, if this is correct, I believe it is. What is red down here? Doesn't like something. Doesn't like some this. Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna mess with that. It's fine. Okay. Um. 
See if it works. So the game over. Isn't gonna say anything yet, and we'll do that next. So let's just make sure the game start works. And then see if I can actually beat it. Oh, why is it not like? Oh. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. This works, then we'll do like a quick game over screen and then like a Whoa, okay, that's huge. Does it work? No. It does work. We just need to uh mess with the sizing a little bit. And I need play I need to play better. <laughs> Um, let's resize this a little bit. Where did I go? Let's do it. I just picked the random thing again. We'll try like 12 points. Default is 8, so we'll see. And then the next thing to do down here, we'll do, we'll do an over screen. And we'll probably copy most of this over actually. And just say, instead of this, we'll just say game over. Now, if we were smart, we would make a simple class that had all the stuff in it that just had what I want this field to say. Again, like I said, don't do don't do anything twice, and we would extend that class. But we'll play it fast and loose here a little bit, <laughs> uh, and. Um, Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. Probably it was probably fine. So we're going to go here and say, substate new game over, uh, and and really we just have to go to start game again. But we do this. We'll start new game. That's true. Ah. Let's see what happens. Like I said, if this is good, we're good, and then we'll end this video here, I think. And we can talk about, well, I'll talk a little bit about what things we could do in the future. Uh, breakout, I don't know why the font's so blurry looking. Press any key. You play. Boom, boom, boom. boom. That's going. Now, if we sat here and played all the, and killed all the blocks, um, it should carry over to the next the next screen and the next it'll just reset it. Whoa. I might have like a minimum <laughs> a min max of um of um the angle based on that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just let this do its thing. Do my game over here and make sure that works, and then we'll call it quits.
not restart, huh? Oh, that's why I want to, I don't want to do that. I want to say. Uh, so yeah, so <clears throat> I think we're done. Um, thanks for sticking around and doing this with me. Um, sorry if it was boring or if I didn't talk enough or whatever. I, I, I really am terrible <laughs> at this stuff. Um, I just hope this is useful to some people that want to get into this uh, and play with it, around with it. So let's see if the game ever works. Yep. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of things we could you, we could do or you could do on your own to advance and, and, and make this better. Um, you could figure out ways to improve the motion down here with maybe acceleration and things. Uh, look at them like drag. So what I would do is say have a drag, a value for drag on the on the paddle uh, for the x. Basically, drag that X to some value, and then say when pressing the button, apply acceleration to the pedal with a max velocity, and that should make it feel a little better. It'll speed up and then slow down and stop. Um, give this some play, play, uh, playing around with that and see. Uh, we could you could implement a high score table where every time you know you, you could have it save it and load it, where when the game starts up, it'll load. A list of all the high scores, and if you if a new game ends with a high score, you know, let them put in their initials and save it. Um, you could do a thing where every X points they get an extra ball. Uh, you could do a thing where you have different layouts of blocks. Um, you know, this is set up in like a like a JSON file or just a comma delimited. Uh, you know. Like a tile map almost blocks uh, wouldn't be fine. Um, you could do power ups. Actually, let me. Yeah. So I noticed that on this on the new game reload, it doesn't clear. Oh, we don't need to do this actually. It didn't reset the score or anything. So we're going to go up here and say if global new game. Because we're, where are we doing that at? Down here. Yeah, yeah. Globals.score equals zero. And globals. Uh, lives equals three. Okay, this is going to reset things. And, and again, we put this somewhere else. So basically, again, the idea is we're 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 just using one state. When the game first loads, new game is true, so it shows our pop up little window, and when they hit start, it will set their score to zero, set their lives to three, and start, let the game play. Every time after that, if they clear all the blocks, it'll reset the state. But because we put all the variables over here in globals, these aren't going to change. So if the score, if they clear the screen, the score is 100,000 points, this, the whole that state's going to reset, but we'll still have the same score and the same number of lives. Until they get a game over, in which case we show the game over screen and flag it as a new game again and when they hit start when they hit the reset button to reset the state it will reset the score in the lives again so we're, we're 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 just saving real estate by not having to make a whole bunch of like oh here's a you know all these different states we just have one state and two substates and again these two substates could be one you could combine them um 
Other things you could add, you could add some power-ups to the game. You could um, change the way the blocks look a little bit, add some animations to them, maybe maybe actually load sprites for them if you wanted to. But um, yeah, that's uh, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this series so far. Um, please let me know what else you want to see. If you want to see another game, I, I'm, I'm going to try to get more of these out. Maybe next week I'll do another one. Um, with a different game, and yeah, uh, again, my name is Tim, I'm the founder of Axel Studio, LLC, from St. Louis, Missouri, you can visit us at axelstudio.com, A-X-O-L, studio, all one word, um, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, the same, Axel Studio, um, please reach out to me, let me know what you think, let me know if you need any help, uh, if something's confusing, uh, I'm usually on the Discord for Hacks Flixel for Hacks, so check us out there. And uh, have a good day. Thanks.